To begin with this first question, we're going to uh, suppose that uh, ABC is a right triangle. They give me for number one that side B is 27 and side C is 45. One of the very first things I would do would be to just sketch out that triangle. Uh, does not have to be to scale. Wouldn't really expect it to be. Of course, it helps if the 90 degree angle looks like a 90 degree angle. But we just want to make sure we understand where things are in relation to each other. Now, if I'm finding the sine of A, I need to find the length of side A. I can do that just using the Pythagorean theorem. So I would set up 27 squared plus A squared equals 45 squared. Probably get a calculator to help me out a little bit with those values. We end up getting 729 plus A squared equals 2025. And if we subtract the, two th or the 729 from both sides, we get A squared all by itself. And we get A squared equals 1,296. And when we square up both sides, we find out that A is just 36. Um, the sine of angle A would be the opposite side, which is A. So the 36 over the hypotenuse, 45. Uh, of course, we want to reduce that. There's common factor of 9. Uh, and so we end up with 4 fifths for the sine of A. Number 2 is a bit similar, although, uh, again, they give us the A, which is the square root of 19. So that's a little bit different. Same basic idea. So if I go A, B, and C with a 90 degree angle here. So A is the square root of 19 and C is 5. Now in order to find the cosine of A, I do need the length of B. So again, using the Pythagorean theorem to find that. So A squared, which would be the square root of 19 squared, plus B squared equals 5 squared. So 19 plus B squared equals 25. Subtract the 19 from both sides, we find out that b squared is 6. So b is the square root of 6. And again, with these triangles, only positive results can happen. So the cosine of angle A would be the adjacent side b, which is the square root of 6, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. For number 3, we need to write the tangent of 5 degrees in terms of its cofunction. So the tangent of 5 degrees equals the cotangent, its cofunction, of 90 minus 5. So tangent of 5 degrees equals cotangent of 85 degrees. And we're doing the same thing for the cosecant. Cosecant of 56 degrees. Of course, the cofunction for the cosecant is secant. So it'll be secant of 90 minus 56. And so all we need to do is find that difference there. And of course, we come up with secant of 34 degrees. So again, that's all there is to that, just writing the uh, function in terms of its cofunction. In the case of number 5 here, it's set up a little bit differently, where now we have, instead of sine of an angle, we have sine of theta plus 48 degrees. So we still do the co-function, cosine, and we still do 90 minus, but then we have the theta plus 48, double parentheses there at the end. So really we're taking the 48 away from the 90, and we end up with that negative theta. So sine of theta plus the 48 equals cosine. I'm just going to set that up as um, 32 minus theta. So sine of theta plus 48 equals cosine of 32 minus theta. For problem 6, the tangent is going to equal the cotangent since they're cofunctions so long as the angles are complementary. So in order to solve for that variable alpha, really is what that is, what we do is we say that 3 alpha plus 24 plus the alpha plus 24 would equal 90 degrees. So again, saying that really those are uh, complementary. 
We combine our like terms, we get 4 alpha plus 24, or sorry, 48. 4 alpha plus 48 equals 90. So subtract the 48, we get 4 alpha equals 42. Divide by the 4, we get alpha equals 10.5 might seem like a bit of an odd value for an answer there, but if we plug the 10.5 in, uh, we can see that those angles would be complementary. For number 7, we're just finding the reference angle. I would start by sketching out the uh, original angle, the 141 degrees. It's past 90 degrees, but not to 180, so that's 141 degrees. So the reference angle is really how much further do we have to go to get to 180. So in order to find that, we just do 180 minus 141, uh, and that turns out to tell us that that reference angle would be 39 degrees. So this one here, 39 degrees. For number 8, finding the reference angle for 205.4, I would use the same approach. Now 205, of course, is past 180. So then the reference angle is really, well, how far past 180 did we go? So we subtract 180 from the 205.4. Uh, I might recommend just using a calculator. Sometimes that decimal uh, messes people up a little bit. Uh, we actually get 25.4 degrees for the reference angle there for number 8. For number 9, we need to find the exact value for the tangent of 120 degrees. So first of all, it's over 90 degrees, so what I would want to do is find the reference angle for 120 degrees. So very similar to the problems we just did with 7 and 8. But 120 degrees, again, would be past 90. So then the question is, well, how much further to 180? So 180 minus the 120, we get 60. And again, these will all be for one of our special angles, 30, 45, or 60. Now that I know I'm working with a 60 degree angle, I would want to kind of recreate that 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, now I know I've asked my students to be able to do that, um, but still it can be a little tough. So again, to make the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we really start with an equilateral triangle, not drawn to scale, of course, each angle being 60 degrees. And we can choose the side length. The smallest value that works well is 2. And then what we do is we bisect that angle. What that does is that gives us a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So there's our 30 degree angle, here's our 60, and of course our 90 is from that perpendicular bisector. This side length is 2 because that's what the that's still one of the full sides from the equilateral triangle. This side's 1 because that's one of those sides that got cut in half. And then we use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm just going to call this A. So A squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared. Uh, we get a squared plus 1 equals 4. Subtract the 1, we get a squared equals 3. So a is the square root of 3. And again, it's just the positive result because we're dealing with uh, non-directional distance at this point. Um, so a being the square root of 3, and we're looking at uh, the reference angle for 120 is 60. So that's my reference angle. So I go from the 60 degree angle, and tangent being opposite over adjacent, so square root of 3 over 1, so it would be the square root of 3. The other thing we have to consider is that we are in the second quadrant. Uh, again, this is another thing that I ask my students to be able to recreate is the where the different trig functions are positive. Um, the tangent and cotangent are positive in the first and third quadrants. So tangent would be negative in the second quadrant, so negative square root of 3. And again, the thought process behind that is our regular tangent ratio of an angle theta is y over x. Uh, in the second quadrant, x is negative and y is positive, so you have a positive divided by a negative. So therefore, in the second quadrant, tangent would be negative. So we end up with negative square root of 3. Finding the exact uh, trig function value for cosecant of 840 degrees. First thing we would do is we would want to find a coterminal angle. Uh, so we would actually take 840 and subtract 720. That would be two revolutions. We're left with 120 degrees. So that's coterminal to 120. So cosecant of 840 would equal exactly cosecant of 120. 
Um, and from the 120, since that is over 90 degrees, we want to find the reference angle, which we actually just did uh, the 120 degrees in the previous problem. And we came up with a 60 degree reference angle for the 120 degree angle to begin with. So we've got a 60 degree reference angle again. So that reference angle is 60 degrees again. So actually I need that 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that over again. I just did that one so I can remember uh, that this is 2, that's 1, and this is the square root of 3. Um, so my reference angle is the 60 degrees. So I'm working from this corner, and it is the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine. So cosecant of some angle, I'm just going to call it theta, in terms of our triangle, it would be the hypotenuse over the opposite. Uh, so hypotenuse over opposite would be 2 over the square root of 3. We have to rationalize that, though, so we multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. We get 2 square roots of 3 over 3. Uh, the other thing we need to consider here is uh, 840, which is, again, coterminal with 120, is in the second quadrant. Uh, cosecant is, again, the same, or reciprocal for the sign. They're both based on y and r. So in our four quadrants, actually, sine and cosecant are positive in the top two. So being in the second quadrant, we would actually have uh, a positive two square roots of 3 over 3 for our result then for the cosecant of 840 degrees. For this question, we're doing the same thing, finding the exact trig function value for secant of negative 855. Uh, again, we need to find a coterminal angle for negative 855. So we would actually add 1080 to that. So a full three revolutions. We end up getting 225. Uh, so we would want to find the reference angle for 225. That's in the third quadrant. Um, and so we do 180 minus 225. And so, or sorry, uh, 225 minus 180. So, yeah. We'll just scratch that out there. So 225 minus 180, we get 45. So the reference angle is 45 degrees. Now we know we're in the third quadrant, so we might can just consider that now. The secant, again, is the reciprocal for the cosine, which is based on x and r, so secant being r over x. Well, in the third quadrant, secant would be negative because x is negative. So I know the secant of negative 855, which is coterminal to 225, would be a negative value. Now my reference angle is 45 degrees, so my 30, 60, 90 triangle won't do me any good. So I will draw a 45, 45, 90 isosceles triangle. Uh, it's isosceles, so again what we do is we have those two sides be 1. We use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the hypotenuse. I'll just call it c squared. So 2 is c squared, so c is the square root of 2. Uh, the secant, again, is the reciprocal to the cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent. So from either of the 45 degree angles, doesn't matter which one we use, we can do the square root of 2, the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So square root of 2 over 1, so really just the negative square root of 2. And again, we know it's negative because we're in the third quadrant where x is negative, and that's what the secant is based off of. For number 12, we kind of switch this around. We say find all the values of theta if theta is in the interval from 0 to 360. So really just looking at one revolution um, that would give us the given uh, trig function value. So trying to figure out what angles would give us the sine of the square root of 3 over 2. Um, so I'm actually going to go back to my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So there's my 30, my 60, and again I just did this so I can remember it's 2, 1, and the square root of 3. So I need to get this to be the square root of 3 over the 2, so the opposite over the hypotenuse. So from my 60 degree angle, the square root of 3 is my opposite and the 2 is my hypotenuse. So in the first quadrant, 
my angle would be 60 degrees. Now, I need to figure uh, that I need the other angle to also give me a positive sine value. Again, sine is based on the y value, so sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. So my other angle would have a 60 degree reference angle in the second quadrant. Um, so 60 degree reference angle in the second quadrant, so that would be 60 degrees short of 180. So the two answers would be 60 degrees for the first quadrant angle and 120 degrees because again it's uh, 180 minus the 60 gives me 120 that would be the uh, angle that would give me a reference angle of 60 degrees and also give me a positive sine value so again we're not interested in the angles that would end up in the third or fourth quadrants because that's where the sine is negative and again I know that because sine is based on y and y is based or y is positive in the top of the uh, coordinate grid and then we're looking at the same thing for uh, cosine of theta being negative square root of 3 over 2. So what values of theta between 0 and 360 would make that happen? Um, again, I can tell right away that it's going to be use, using my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'll sketch that out again. I'm actually getting pretty good at this now. Uh, 2, 1, and then the square root of 3. Um, so again, if it's adjacent over the hypotenuse, then my reference angle would be 30 degrees. Now, however, 30 degrees in the first quadrant would give me a positive cosine. So it's not in the first quadrant. Uh, cosine is positive uh, in quadrants 1 and 4. And again, I can figure that out because cosine is based on the x values. It's x over r. x is positive on the right. So I'm looking for the angles that have a 30 degree reference angle in the second and the third quadrants. So in the second quadrant, it is 30 degrees less than 180, so 150 degrees. And in the third quadrant, it is 30 degrees past 180, so that is 210 degrees. So there are the two angle measures between 0 and 360. They give me a cosine that is the negative square root of 3 over 2. And for 14, since that has a square root of 2 in there, I can tell that I will need my 45, 45, 90 triangle. So it's going to allow me to sketch that out here. And again, I know those are 1s and 1s, and I did this just a minute ago, so that's the square root of 2. Um, and again, you could use the Pythagorean theorem if you forget um, that that wants to be the square root of 2. And again, we just pick the 1s because that's the smallest number that works well. Um, so I know my reference angle would be 45 degrees. Um, but again, a 45 degree angle in the first quadrant would give me a positive value for the sine, and I want a negative because it's a negative root 2 over 2. And of course, uh, from the 45 degree angle, you know, the opposite over the hypotenuse would be 1 over the square root of 2, but we would rationalize that and get the root 2 over 2, and of course the negative why we're looking at uh, different quadrants other than the first. Again, sine is based on the y value. y is positive on top. So we'd be looking at a 45 degree reference angle in the third and in the fourth quadrants. So looking at what makes those 45 degrees. Um, in the third quadrant, that would be 45 degrees past 180. So we're we'll looking at 225. In the fourth quadrant, that is 45 degrees before 360. So we'll be looking at 315 degrees. So there are the two angle measures between 0 and 360 that give us a sine value of exactly negative square root of 2 over 2.